Hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I, um, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is the part where cultivating cannabis gets really, really, really annoying and tiring. The removal of the majority of the root system and the stump right here. So let's get into it because this is a little bit long. Um, it took me over 45 minutes just to get that one out and it is definitely going to be equally as long with this. Now when I harvest there's a reason why I kind of keep this and kind of like I'll cut these little nubs off and everything so I can kind of have a handle and some things to pull at because this when you have when you grow really really good bud and really really healthy herb and as I've said in past videos as is a as is below will be above well we're now getting through the below um this is just it's just it's labor intensive and you got to do it and you don't have and, and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but it's got to be pretty much 80% um, normally the kind of tools you'll look for will be like a broad a broad bladed pitchfork those work great um, I'm thinking of trying that little garden weasel twisty thing but honestly in all my years and past experience just this simple soil pickaxe is really what you're gonna need um, so I start with the forky side and then I work my way on the top breaking up all the initial roots There's actually a few layers of roots that we'll, we'll discuss, you know here First is your top layer. That's like gonna cause like a mat That's what causes the water to splatter That's why you notice I'm always top dressing with fresh soil as I water and let things kind of mat down and, and finish The second is this ball that twists it makes a huge spiral and it's right all the way to the base and it will always go to the bottom of whatever planter you're doing. And then finally, especially when you're using canvas or really any planter for that matter, the roots go all the way to the bottom and then seeing that the canvas will trap moisture from when you're watering and that little leaks out, the roots end up weaving themselves in with the canvas bag or just forming another initial bowl that you'll notice on your plastic planters and those are a pain so i always like to start by removing the top layer first when i get a ball of root such as this i'll take then the blunt end and i'll just tap out so i can preserve as much dirt as possible after that first top layer is removed you're going to want to then go in towards about this is about eight inch to 12 inches from the stock center and I'm going to start earthing and bringing up using the fork, digging this root. And see how I'm kind of just combing it and getting it. You're going to have to remove it in chunks. All this stuff is great to be composted and will also work fine as a quick compost when you replant. It'll break down and then it'll get used up, but you don't want to have an excess of 15% of root matter in your soil medium. And on that same token, any pieces of leaf or any matter there, you don't wanna have more than 8% of your total medium being used leaves. A few here and there is fine. Personally, I like to burn the root and especially the leaves and then filter it with water and then you've got really good suitable potash. Um, but seeing that the weather's warming up, I'm gonna go directly into compost and then I'll use it for gardening. Now, aside from removing this and doing all, all of that, after we get done with that, we're going to want to find out where our soil's at. So I highly recommend picking up a soil test kit. This is one by Lusterleaf, the Rappi Test. Um, I've actually, I'm a big fan of these, I love them. You just um, mix soil and water, let it sit for a while, and then you'll fill up to these lines and you'll bust a little capsule in accordance to test these. First testing the simple pH, you just put that much soil, fill with water and do that. Make sure that when you use this, buy a jug of distilled water, that way you know there's nothing in the water that's gonna like throw off your results. You're guaranteed to have 
a right result. This is under 25 bucks. And there's, gosh, 10, there's 40 tests in here, so which is probably 10 a piece. So that's gonna last you a while. And I just, I highly recommend this. It's, it's always good to have that peace of mind and know what you're going on. Next, I'm probably, since I enjoyed using the Exhale CO2 bag, I'll get another. And I'm a big fan of what this is, this mycorrhizae and everything. <coughs> this is more than enough for these two 100 gallon sized planters. So I'll probably just honestly be using that much and checking it and the rest will go into my compost bin. This is way more than enough. But I do love the fact that it's mycorrhizin and mycorrhizin and cannabis are, are of the many friendly plants and all that. Absolutely wonderful. Other things that I'll like to use to recharge my soil depending on my lab results would be, and it's now impossible to get, mind you, some bat guano. Um, you can get some seabird poop, some other things. Fox Farm has a really outstanding thing called, um, they've got cavern culture and then they've got like this, um, this uh, uh, ocean, ocean mix and everything. That would be outstanding to use in this situation. On it, obviously one bag is more than enough for 100 gallons. I would split those, what are they, 40 pound bags into 10 pounds and just use 10 pounds of that each. Other things that I like to use is, um, I like to get a lot of oyster shells, mussel shells, crab, lobster. Um, I like to do a slow bake, 255 degrees in an oven for quite a few hours. That way it doesn't cook them. It, it just slowly dehydrates them and it doesn't burn off all the nutrients that are left in those shells. Then I'll place them in a plastic bag and bash them with a kitchen hammer. And then I'll chill and throw those into the soil. Those are always really great. And finally, what I think is the most important part of recharging your soil and the smartest thing that any of us can do is while we're waiting for our mother plants to grow because I've got time for that. Um, and then I want to then of course I'll need time to cut clones off them and then the clones will need to mature. And then I can put them in here and we can start another grow. But in the meantime, I would just be missing out, losing money, doing all kinds of silliness if I'm not using this grow tent and at the same time not doing something beneficial for me, my family, as well as the soil itself. So I'm gonna grow some food that's gonna recharge the soil and take care of me. And some things that I like to use to recharge my soil are simple, you know, greens, like arugula, kale, definitely kale will help, lettuces, Alfalfa, absolutely alfalfa. Alfalfa is good in shakes. It's good, it's good raw. It's a little bit of alfalfa. I mean, just juicing it. I mean, it's really beneficial to your health and it's extremely beneficial to the soil. Other things that are really going to help, sugar peas, not so much, but green beans. Lake beans, um, uh, gosh, Harico Verts, these are real cats. Um, the long green beans, absolutely. Because after they flower, and then of course, you know, you'll have to pollinate them being in your indoor situation. And then they start bearing that vegetable. They shove so much nitrogen. They'll take the phosphorus, the potassium, they'll balance out the soil. They'll shove a bunch of nitrogen in there, which in the early stages of cannabis's life, which is why it's called weed, um, loves. It'll soak that nitrogen up. But of course, before we put, put our bud plants back in, we'll do one more soil test. But doing beneficial vegetables and grows and things like this, is a great way for you to take care of yourself and take care of your soil, balance out the nutritional level and be prepared for your next harvest. Well, your next grow really, and then you know harvest, blah, blah, sorry. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's really the way to do things. You don't just wanna sit this here because what's gonna happen if this soil sits idle even in the dark, it's gonna dry out, it's gonna kill your microorganisms that we really, really genuinely need. And don't get me wrong, you can replace them and redo them, but it's best to keep them going, keep them alive. I've got worms in here. I've got, you know, some nematodes I like to keep going so I never have thrips, thrips, you know, just all kinds of things. And then this mycorrhizin from the fungus I'm gonna break up while wearing gloves, of course, so I don't contaminate it. Um, just, we, we wanna keep the soil living. 
You'll notice also that you never wanna dry your soil out before you start removing the root and the ball. I know it makes it somewhat easier, but it puts everything in the air. It's gonna dirty up your lights. You're gonna breathe it in. You're gonna get it all over your clothes. You're gonna get in your hair. Then if you walk past your drying bud full of fans, it's gonna throw dirt all over your fans. So do this moist. Now, finally, I wanna tell you guys why these roots have been such a pain in my ass. And it's because of this awesome product that Fox Farm has. And Fox Farm, I finally found a failed product, but I'll talk about that later in some products that I'm loving and products that I'm hating and things that I suggest not buying. But this product, buy it. This stuff. This, I have, I have had a lot of healthy root systems and I've had a lot of really big serious ones to deal with in my life and in my 10 years of doing this. But I've had to work so hard to build those soils and do so many things with the rotting fish teas and all the stuff that I would do at the trout farm and, and then going to places like Seattle Fish and everything and, and buying some crab and some lobster from them and doing things and building this and you know munching down on seafood, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to do that. You really don't have to do much at all anymore because of this freaking product. This thing is amazing. It is so amazing. This Bush Doctor Kangaroots Root Drench. Buy it. The other one, the lar the brew that we talked about, the epic failure that I think is that, that Fox Farm did making that. It's the exact same thing as this, only it's a dollar more and it has molasses in it. So no to paying more money and no to putting freaking molasses in your freaking dirt. Don't do it. But that kangaroo stuff, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this is, look at this. Ugh. And I know for the most part, you know, it's still green and all this. This is still living matter. But, ugh, ugh. you see this? And this doesn't even touch the surface or the subsurface of what I will be digging out in the next hour and probably hour and a half. Look at this. Look at that healthy, it's still living. Look at that root system. Fox Farm, you have impressed me once again. This, that, that, is, that is an absolution. One of the many things that makes top shelf cannabis. Right there. Don't be beguiled to anything else. It starts with that. It really does. So, anyway, after we do all this, we're going to want to shop back, clean out all that dirt. We're going to want to set our potatoes aside. We'll re-put our potatoes in. The potatoes will also help recharge the soil with our greens, our beans. They're all communal, communal crops. I mean, they're, you know, it's just, they're going to do all that hard work for you and feed your belly or take care of the munchies um, all while doing that. After we get the dirt vacuumed up, we get our things reset. Of course, I'm gonna move this tent out. I gotta get some space between this wall. I wanna try that and do a few more experiments, but it's looking like there is a mass difference between 480 and 660 um, on yield and quality. I wanna make sure that that's not the case. I'm gonna do some other testing here, but it's going the same in both tents. Um, sorry, I digress. Uh, but yeah, I wanna get a little bit of bleach, a uh, cap of bleach in five gallons of water. Bleach is organic. And we'll just wipe down all the walls. We'll get it clean. We'll turn off our lights. We'll detail clean our lights. Uh, very, very, you don't even need a wetted towel or anything. Just get a dry towel, clean them off everything. Don't bring water to the lights. Unplug them, of course. Uh, clean the top of your ballast, clean that. Uh, wet wipe, clean all your CO2 lines, check and see if there's any dirt in the in airport and the out airport, uh, any fencing, anything, get it all cleaned, clean the floor around you, get it all super clean, 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 sanitary. There's a reason why I had one little teeny little piece of that brittosis, and that's because I had cleanliness and airflow. And also the reason why it was caused is the bud was like this, up against this. That's why you want to make sure when we're growing things out, to if you can, clean out everything. That's why these tents unzip so easily and why you always want to be able to get completely around your tent. You never want to back a tent up against a wall or anything like that. You want to be able to walk all the way around your tent so you can unzip it. You can do maintenance. Um, you have airflow around it. Believe it or not, the airflow on the outside of your tent is just as important as the airflow in going inside through your tent. Um, 
you know, when it comes to that. Uh, commercially speaking, I think, you know, just kind of apply the same thing there, but you're not using tents and all that. It's just a little bit easier to clean up. So, yeah, um, I think that pretty much covers about everything we need to cover in this uh, recharge your soil and get ready for the next crop video. So I hope to see you all back here soon.